Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, turret layouts and barrel numbers and uh, why the U.S. Navy chose what they chose and what the ideal layout is, even though that's uh, very much open to interpretation. This idea started because I've had a couple of conversations over on my Facebook page this week with people asking about turret layouts and and uh, things like that, including a, a fairly long discussion with uh, a gentleman about this sort of stuff. So I figured, well, eh, I've got thoughts on this. Why not talk about it? So uh, American fast battleships, the North Carolina, South Dakota, and Iowa class, all feature three three-gun turrets with two mounted forward and one mounted aft. However, even though this was pretty consistent as a design feature, through these ships, it was far from the American ideal. Freed from any displacement limits, what do they do with the Montana class? They go to four triple turrets. What happened the last time they were freed from displacement limits? The first South Dakota class battleship of uh, the World War I era. Four triple turrets. And, and so, that is what I believe the American ideal was. This is a balanced layout with an equal number of guns fore and aft. So if you are chasing an enemy battle fleet or running from an enemy battle fleet, uh, you've got an equivalent amount of firepower available at both ends of the ship, uh, an equivalent magazine stowage. Uh, whereas you can bring this absolutely massive 12-gun broadside to bear on an enemy fleet. Now, just because this is the American ideal doesn't mean that it is the world ideal. In fact, uh, not all American battleships have this layout. The quote-unquote standard style of American battleships, the classes from Nevada uh, up into the unbuilt World War I classes like South Dakota and Lexington, all feature this four turret layout, uh, but they have a mix of twin and triple turrets. Uh, and older American battleships all had twin turrets. So, um, and it's, it's worth mentioning at this point that even historians don't agree that this is the perfect layout. Uh, the famous battleship historians wrote a number of books together. I can never pronounce their names. I, I really apologize to these two guys. Uh, Gerske and Doolin. Uh, I've read a number of their books, really respect them as historians, can't pronounce their names. I'm sure people have that same issue when they look at my stupid Polish name. Uh, anyway, these two guys and even uh, Siegfried Breyer talk about how the four turret layout with all twin turrets is better. Well, how does one less barrel per turret uh, end up being better? How does that work? Well, it means that if a turret is hit, and we see this happen a lot in World War I battleship combat, turrets get hit and knocked out all the time, uh, we don't really see it as much in World War II. Um, but it means if a turret is hit, you only lose two guns. Uh, you don't lose three guns, four guns, anything like that. And perhaps most significantly, a two-barreled turret has a significantly smaller diameter barbette, which means that it takes up less internal volume of the ship. The biggest flaw in American fast battleships is that where the bow is supposed to be narrowing up forward to achieve a high speed, you've got all sorts of uh, space restrictions because you've got this big wide three-barreled turret there and then the magazine spaces around that because you don't store your powder inside your uh, barbette. It's stored outside the barbette. Well, now you're pushing stuff out. And then you've got a torpedo defense, which is supposed to be uh, 10, 20, 30 feet deep. And on American fast battleships in particular, there just isn't enough room up forward for all of that stuff. And so they have a major weakness uh, where a warhead 
has less to punch through before it hits one of the most vital parts of the ship, the forward magazine. Uh, so that causes an issue. You don't see Bismarck or Tirpitz explode catastrophically because they've got a ton of depth around all of their magazine uh, spaces because they've only got those two gun turrets. That said, I, as an American battleship owner, uh, believe that Tirpitz and Bismarck had an anemic amount of firepower for their displacement with only eight 15-inch uh, guns. Uh, that's not all that much firepower, especially coming from a country where we put nine 16-inch guns on ships and are disappointed that we didn't have the displacement to put a fourth turret on there. Granted, eight 15-inch guns was enough to deal with hood, so there's arguments to be made each way here. But uh, what are some other benefits for other turret layout? So uh, first off, there have been four different main turret layouts that have been deployed. Uh, there has been a single barreled turret layout. Uh, the most recent example of this I can think of is HMS Furious, the large light cruiser slash light battle cruiser slash aircraft carrier of World War I, had a single 18 inch gun. Then you've got twin turrets. Those are probably the most ubiquitous. Uh, three gun or triple turrets. You see those show up uh, about mid dreadnought era. And some people love them, some people hate them. And then you've got the quadruple turrets that show up at the end of World War I designs and some French battleships, and, and then uh, a little bit in World War II. So, uh, probably the most famous battleships with quad turrets are the uh, French Richelieu class and the British King George V class. Uh, these quad turrets are essentially two twin turrets sided together. So while American turrets on fast battleships are three gun turrets, they have three individual uh, barrels that are in their own separate armored boxes inside the turret that can all elevate and fire independently from each other. Uh, typically with a quad turret, you've got two twins with a divider down the middle, so a hit to the turret might knock out two of the barrels instead of one. That's not ideal. Uh, they have a uh, huge, huge diameter barbette. That's not ideal. Uh, and it's worth mentioning at this point that there were uh, sectuple turrets designed for some truly massive super battleships, but as none were ever uh, built, and as, as far as I know, none were ever fielded either. Uh, and you do see, with a couple of countries, uh, preliminary designs where they look at this sort of thing to just how do we put as many barrels as possible. Uh, some of the American Tillman designs look at this. Some of the Japanese designs when they're designing their 888 fleet at the end of World War I uh, look at this. Um, so you can go bigger than quad in theory, but I've never seen it done in practice. Uh, so. You've got a huge barbette, you've got a large number of guns being knocked out at once if a turret is damaged or disabled. Uh, what is the benefit of something like this? One major benefit is that you can swap it out with a smaller turret with a uh, larger caliber. The United States actually did this. North Carolina was originally designed to have 12 14-inch guns in three quadruple turrets. And while she was under construction, they decided to escalate to a triple 16-inch turret. So they intentionally designed the diameters of both to be the same. Uh, and it meant that they were able to really easily during construction just swap one in for another, and that becomes the iconic uh, American gun layout. They would have preferred 12 14-inch guns in four turrets, but that extra turret adds significantly more weight. If you just put an extra barrel in each turret you've got, you're adding uh, hundreds of tons less than a full other armored turret and armored magazine and lengthening the armored citadel. Uh, so that was a really great thing. And you see this a lot in battleship designs. Furious with her single 18 inch gun was just a modified version of Courageous and Glorious, which had 
twin 15 inch guns. So the single 18 fit in the uh, twin 15 inch barbette. The Tennessee and California had triple 14 inch guns. The US Navy modifies that just a little bit into the Colorado class and puts twin 16 inch guns in basically the same uh, barbette diameter. So uh, again, twin guns, they, they really prefer triple guns, but we've already got this battleship design done. We, we've already paid for it. We've already tested the design with Tennessee and California and it's a good design. So let's just up the size of the guns. Uh, and, and you do see this happen a lot. There were plans for Scharnhorst and Eisenhower to have their triple 11 inch guns replaced with twin 15s. Uh, and, and you do see a lot of countries design their barbette diameters to be able to accommodate multiple size things or design their turrets to be able to fit in a certain barbette diameter so you can retrofit older ships. Uh, so the bigger the number of barrels in your gun initially, the bigger your barbette, the more barrels you can have if you end up rebarreling your ship. Not that people are really looking that far ahead. The other advantage is you can really compress the number of turrets you have. So for example, Reichelieu only has two turrets, but she has equivalent firepower to Bismarck on a significantly smaller armored citadel, which means that she is a significantly lighter and cheaper ship with the exact same combat power. So the Germans build a ship one third heavier that is no better than a, a much cheaper French ship. Uh, so I think that's really cool. Now, Reichelieu does have restricted arcs of fire. She doesn't have any main battery guns firing across about a uh, 40 or 50 degree angle at the extreme aft end of the ship. Uh, not ideal, but the French decide they could live with it. Um, and they ended up not compressing the turrets as much as they liked because then a single hit could knock out both guns. So they ended up having to spread them out a little bit at the forward part of the ship which makes them some of the ugliest battleships ever built. I, I really love the design. I hate looking at them. They're, they're really hard on the eyes. Uh, pushes the superstructure a little bit further aft, uh, instead of being pretty close to center, like with an Iowa-class battleship that gives you a really beautiful balanced design. Uh, the, the turrets are really widely spaced. It makes the thing look like it's got uh, uh, this huge gap in its front teeth. Um, not ideal, but, uh, not ideal from an aesthetic point of view, but a, a really effective design point of view, especially when operating under a, a 35,000 ton restriction, which the French chose to follow and the Germans chose not to, uh, which was their loss because how many more tanks could they have had on the Eastern Front without spending the extra 15,000 tons on Bismarck and Tirpitz for a ship that's no better at the end of the day? Three-gun turrets are much derided, especially in European circles, uh, because it's really difficult to work the center barrel. On the left and right barrel, you've got room on your side to be able to put in extra equipment. For the center barrel, you don't have that much room. It's crammed between the other two. Uh, and, and so you see the Germans inspecting the Austrian to get off class in World War I and looking at their triple turrets and being like, no, we don't like that. Or building the uh, Greek Salamis class battleships during World War I and looking at the designs for the American triple 14 inch turret that's gonna go in there and uh, deciding to stay with twin turrets for all of their major battleship designs with the exception of Scharnhorst and Eisenhower, which are just uh, redesigned and expanded pocket battleships, cruisers, really. Uh, so the, the German, and even with those, they look at replacing them with, with twin barreled 15 inch guns instead. Uh, so the, the, the Germans look at the triple turret and, and really don't like it. The British build one class of battleships with triple turrets, the Nelrods, Nelson and Rodney, and uh, those guns do not perform well throughout much of the ship's career. And future battleship designs, they, they flip flop between twins and quads and sometimes triples and they end up never building another triple barreled uh, ship again. But the United States really loves that extra quarter of firepower that they get by adding an extra barrel. Uh, and so that's what the US Navy takes. So my uh, personal favorite layout on a ship is 
Also the US Navy's personal favorite. I really like the balance standard type design with four triple turrets. And I get that there wasn't enough weight with the fast battleships to put in that fourth turret. Um, but that's my aesthetic preference. Uh, that's my operational preference. Uh, if I got to design my own battleship, that's what it would end up looking like. So what is your uh, preferred version? And uh, be fair to yourself and other viewers, what are some of the pros and cons of your preferred layout? Well, let's know in the comment section down below. Let's get a, a discussion started. Do you like the uh, two quadruple turrets up forward? Do you think there should be more quadruple turrets? The French actually designed some World War I era battleships that uh, we're going to have as many as 16 gun barrels in four quadruple turrets. Another class of ships that's uglier than Sin, but uh, brings a whole heap and lot of firepower to the party uh, in a really cool design because French dry docks were not big enough to accommodate a bigger ship with more turrets, so they just put more barrels per turret. Like, the different countries have different operational requirements. So what, what do you think is a cool layout? Do you like the American version? Uh, the, for fast battleships, for standard battleships, like, what, what do you think? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other private individuals uh, and businesses, and we really appreciate that support. There's a link in the description below uh, where you can donate to help support the museum, and we really appreciate that. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us. Thanks for watching.